Hey, welcome to The Conversation. You're with Andy Mason, and this is Authentic Conversations around the messy intersection of faith, family, and business. And I've got with me today Dr. Ben Edwards of Lubbock, Texas. And we're going to unpack this whole conversation around what does it look like to be a medical profession in the kingdom of God? Or what does the kingdom of God look like in the medical profession? Be a fun journey. And uh, I got to meet Dr. Ben a couple of weeks ago, actually, through some friends who are also in Lubbock, Texas. And the results of what they're doing is absolutely wonderful. So Dr. Ben, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Andy. Appreciate you having me on the show. So give us a little bit of a snapshot. What is your work right now look like? And then we're going to go back in terms of how did you get to be doing what you're doing? Okay. Well, current work is kind of twofold. One is we treat patients in a medical clinic. Can we do it a little more integratively or holistically? Um, And I've, excuse me, I've six nurse practitioners at three locations across West Texas, our primary locations in downtown Lubbock, Texas. So that's part of it is we treat symptoms. We can do it pharmaceutically or nutraceutically, the green version of treating treating a symptom. And the second part of what I do is teach and teaching people how to be whole, be made well um, and not need a doctor. And so there's a definite distinguishing between those two. You need symptom treated, you know, symptomatic treatment is fine, but that's not the answer. And I didn't learn that in medical school. I thought that was the answer. And then I learned, no, there's there's natural ways to treat a symptom, but that's not the answer. So really the education side, which is our wellness program, um, we teach people how to steward their physical, but also we're a spirit being housed in that physical and the, the spiritual side, the, the invisible side, the supernatural part actually impacts the physical cells, impacts our DNA, our genes, our mitochondria. It's amazing. The water that we're 90% water and that water, the structure of our water changes from our spoken word and our thinking as a man thinketh in in his heart. So is he. So this interplay of supernatural to the natural, it's amazing, but that's on the wellness side, trying to educate people. I have my own podcast called You're the Cure. A doctor cannot cure you. A doctor, the original Latin of that was teacher. So really we need to teach and connect some dots for you so you can go out there and be made whole and be well. Now, of course, I do believe in miraculous divine healing, but I also believe in therapeuo, I think it's the Greek word. We've got to learn. It's deception. It is lack of knowledge where we think high fructose corn syrup and canola oil is made is, is food for the human consumption. It's not. Yeah. It's not at all. And in yeah. fact, just real quick for the heart, uh, our heart muscle, it never gets a break. Your calf gets a cramp. You can sit down and rest until the lactic acid clears out. Your heart never gets to, to a break. And it prefers to burn saturated fat for fuel to prevent a cramp, aka heart attack. And what are we told? Heart healthy is the vegetable oils. It's absolute lack of knowledge or deception. Anyways, we teach on these things. So there is the natural and there's the spiritual. We try to touch on both. Yeah. And uh, and, and to be fair, outside of the United States of America, a high fructose corn syrup is banned. So, I mean, that's that's a completely separate subject. So let's go. Actually, let's give a quick win uh, just for those that are watching. These four pillars of what do you call it? Four pillars of health, health or wellness for anybody listening. This is just going to be really helpful. What are those? And, and what's the order of those that you've learned? Right. So 12 years ago, when I got out of the conventional family practice, what I'd been trained in and practiced at for seven years, got out of that. The Lord showed me real quick, just teach people nutrition, hydration, movement, and peace. So we've been doing that the whole 12 years, but at our 10 year anniversary, June of 22, Um, In the closet in my home, the Lord spoke clearly to me, hey, the first 10 years was your way. Now it's my way. And I thought, wait a minute, I thought I was doing it your way. And and over as I sought that out and and asked and seek, and I found what I found so far, and I'm still finding, but flip it. He said, you got to flip it. It's really peace, movement, hydration, nutrition. And really what I've got so far on that is we are putting diet and exercise up on this pedestal. I mean, Us as practitioners, definitely patients would latch onto that. This diet's going to cure me. This diet's going to fix me if I exercise just right. I mean, those three pillars were getting put up there as an idol, 
a false god, a savior, whatever you want to call it. And we're eating from the tree of knowledge, um, scientific. Here's all the published data that says intermittent fasting is great and low carbs, great keto, whatever. What well, can be, and we saw those results, but if you only eat from that tree of knowledge using a, our own intellect only, you stay fasting and keto too long, a lot of people crash and burn two or three years down the road, their metabolism tanks and other things tank. So what I got out of that was, if you don't put peace pillar, and, and we can get into what that even means, but the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. Eat from the tree of life, and, and the Holy Spirit will tell you when to fast, how long to fast, what to fast from, when to feast. So it was this, things were just out of order. So those four pillars, really, it's got to be, in my opinion, and there's plenty of evidence, including my own mentor who since passed, but he he was A++ in the three pillars, nutrition, hydration, movement, not so much in the peace pillar. We see it all the time. Stress, high cortisol, cortisol, shut your thyroid down, cortisol, shut your immune system, neurons are shredded by cortisol, your muscles are shredded by cortisol, and cortisol is your fight or flight. So if you're in fight or flight, you can eat, exercise, and drink perfect, and it's not you're going to hit a ceiling. I, so those are the four pillars. I love it. So let's go back up a bunch. So you were a uh, your medical doctor. How did you get into that journey? And just so it can lay the foundation that, like Doctor Luke in the Bible, wrote one of the Gospels, walked with Jesus, a medical professional who loves and follows Jesus and engages in the kingdom. What's your journey in that, Dr. Ben? Well, starting out, grew up in a small town in central Texas, and the two doctors in the town were both my granddads. And they were great men. They were sweet and kind and humble and great doctors and just great men, pillars in the community. So I watched these guys in church and in the community and in their office, Just and they did house calls. They delivered babies. They did surgeries. They did it all, old school. And so I thought, man, that's what I want to do. I want to help people like they did. And I don't see any other profession where you help that much. So I went to medical school, UT Houston, 2002, graduated, went to a Waco family practice for residency, was chief resident. And then, but both, so both my granddads were MDs, two uncles were MDs. My great, great granddad was an MD. My dad sold Xerox copiers, still does. But so I'm very allopathic, narrow. I didn't know what a chiropractor did. I didn't know the word holistic alternative med. I didn't know any of that. Wasn't looking for any of that. I was looking for me to, my dream is small town country doctor like my granddad's. So went out to West Texas to a little town called Post, um, and it, I was the only doctor in the county there for seven years, and it was a little wow. county clinic, and we we turned it around. It, they were losing money. We made money, volume, seven-minute visits. They trained us to do these seven-minute visits because you got to have volume to make money to keep the doors open, Medicaid, Medicare. They don't pay good. you got to just crank through them, and we did that. And so we did that well to the world standard. We were up in the 95th percentile of all clinics in America as far as production and finances. Um, so Washington Post newspaper out of Washington, D.C. came and followed us around for a week, put us on the front page of the Washington Post. And this is how you run a small town clinic and be successful. So, so, I mean, that, I, so at that point, you are at the top of what is possible as for a general practitioner, medical doctor, running a practice, it's financially sound. Uh, it's doing everything from a, the world's perspective that it's supposed to be doing. And yeah. you're getting accolades. Where where was your walk with God at that time? Um, it was pretty immature. So I was baptized in the First Baptist Church in Belton, Texas, when I was 11 years old after vacation Bible school. I grew up in the church very religious, you know, just religious and doctrines of man, basically, which I learned a lot. I'm, I'm not dogging that, um, but immature for sure, all the way through until um, about two years into my, my practice in that small town, we couldn't get pregnant. I mean, our first baby, we got pregnant first month off birth control. Then we, our second baby on our timeline, our plan, we're going to have a baby every two years. The second one, nothing. And, and we went 12 months with no, nothing infertile because 12 months is your official definition of infertility. So then we went to the fertility doctor for another 12 months, nothing, nothing, nothing. So 24 straight negative pregnancy tests, 24 straight crash and burn every month emotionally. And then I was reading the, in the word, which I halfway didn't even believe that the Bible was true at that point, even though I grew up in church. But I grew up under another religion, too, called Darwinian evolution. Twelve years sitting under that religious system. 
So I had a lot of doubt and unbelief. But anyways, I went to the word. I read that verse that day in Matthew, seek ye first the kingdom. And I stopped right there. Didn't even read this next part of that verse. And I grabbed my wife and I said, look at this verse. It says, seek the kingdom first. We're yeah. seeking a baby. We are so out of line. Even though half my brain's thinking, I don't even know if the Bible's true because Darwin's <laughs> true. How, how can Darwin and Genesis be true? They can't. It's, I mean, but I had enough belief for, I'm at least looking. And, and that hit me. That, that verse hit me enough to start talking to God about it and repenting. And But my very next prayer after I said, forgive us for seeking this baby. We're good with one. Thank you for one. It's your ways, not our ways. Let's go. What's your plan for our life? But my very next prayer was, you're going to have to show me what the kingdom is because I'm supposed to be seeking it first. I don't know what that means. No one's ever taught me that. I haven't even heard that, even though I've read this verse before. So that was my next prayer. Show me the kingdom. And then the next prayer, literally in the same moment, was, I believe, help me with my unbelief. Yeah, because honestly, I'm not sure you're there if you're real or you hearing me. I mean, I'm talking to you, so I kind of believe. But honestly, I'm not even sure about this whole thing in the Bible. Did a man write it? Did you write it? You know, all, just all of that. And then so there was a three, four year process of me of God started bringing these scientists in my, into my life that showed me intellectually, scientifically proved things out in the geology whether it was archaeology, geology, mathematical, statistical probability, showed me how um, irreducible complexity of the cell. Darwin himself said, if irreducible complexity is shown in the future, then my, my theory is dead. So it was all this stuff. And he was like, wow, 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 this is awesome. Okay, this book is supernatural. And I can believe it. Let's Now I'm all in. So of course, pause, pause on that. Here's what I love. And especially for those listening, I love how God... I mean, what kind of God do we have that would meet us where we're at? For you, yeah. he came to you, you are a scientific brain, and he came with all of these connections of people that connected the dots or showed you the dots, and yeah. you were ready to hear and see. Yeah. And I, I just love that. For others, they don't need that. Uh, yeah. but, but you did, and God was so kind to do that. Yeah. And my sweet wife, I'd come home with, Hey, honey, look at this thing. I met this guy's PhD, uh, astrophysicist, whatever. And he showed me this and that's nice, honey. Why don't you just believe? <laughs> like, I don't know why I can't just believe, but I do now. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, so that was three or four years down in post and we we're in post for seven years doing the small town doctor thing. So he first started just opening my heart and in intellectually getting the whole. And so now I'm solid there. And then the kingdom, he started opening that up. That's a whole nother story. I went to Africa yeah. on a medical mission trip, and there's some miraculous things happened that showed me church, church in quotes that I was doing every Sunday versus church in Africa versus what the word church, ecclesia, called out once, the kingdom. So that started opening up. So it was this preparation for seven years. So my walk with God at the time where this divine Boom. appointment happened, yeah, it's like he was prepping me, and then the medical things hit where I wasn't looking for anything. Now I will say we were at the top of the game as far as the world standards financially, but patient outcomes, not good. And, and I'm not, I mean, I'm saying I was given the prescriptions I was supposed to get for diabetes and asthma and allergies and ADD and all the things, but people weren't getting well. They were coming back needing just more medicine, needing a higher dose, needing a second blood pressure pill, a second or third diabetic pill, a second heartburn pill because the first one quit working. It was constant, just, man, no one's getting well. So that was the underlying there, but I had nowhere else to go in my thinking. Like, I'm doing what I'm trained to do. I'm a highly trained young whippersnapper doctor. I know what I'm doing, and I'm doing the right things. I'm doing the protocols I was taught, but the outcomes aren't that good. But, oh, well, that's just how it is. We're making the money. And so... But I had no idea. I wasn't looking for alternative to my nurse practitioner at the time who had celiac disease. He went to a bed and breakfast in another town north of Lubbock called Amarillo. And he met a doctor at that bed and breakfast who said, there's no such thing as diseases. They're all consequences. If you weren't born with it, you don't need to keep it. And my nurse prac had celiac disease at the time. And that doctor showed him how to steward his physical health where that celiac would go into remission. He could eat gluten and not react to it. Wow. And so after three or four months of my nurse prac doing these things, getting healed, he came to me and told me that. And I'm like, no way, you can't heal celiac. And then we argued about that for a little bit. 
I called the doctor up in Amarillo. We argued back and forth on the telephone for a year. I just couldn't believe it until he finally said, I'm done arguing with you. Send me your 10 sickest patients, <laughs> fibromyalgia, lupus, diabetes, whatever, your, your worst ones. You send them to all the specialists. They've been everywhere and they're not better. Send them to me. I did. They got better. So at that point, it's game on. This doesn't make, I don't know how this could be, but these patients are better. I didn't learn this in school, but I don't care. I went to school to help people. So at that point, I had to split from the conventional medical model that only treats symptoms in seven-minute visits. So at that point, so there's this convergence of about multiple things. One, seek first the kingdom rather than seeking a baby or seeking a result. So that, that applies to everything. Secondly, is that the kindness of God to bring you these people into your life that spoke your language that actually demonstrated so to the point where you're fully persuaded and now you're intellectually persuaded as well then you yeah. you go on a, a mission trip that exposes you i say you don't people don't know what they don't know until they experience something different and you experience something of the ecclesia what jesus established as the church the kingdom mm -hmm. of god which is like mind blow. Hang on. Whoa, this is, a, this is the everyday believer miracles like this. The, how's this happen? And then right under your nose, your nurse, nurse practitioner experienced wellness that you could not deliver from any of the systems. I love this about the kingdom of God, power over systems. Yeah. And, and so it just, all of this feeds to your scientific brain of, well, let's experiment, test, see what is going on. So at this point, you have sent this, I'm assuming this was your mentor. Uh, you've sent him your 10 worst patients that your medical training and expertise cannot solve, can treat, but cannot heal. So what happens with those and what's the journey that that led you to? Yeah. So an example, a 74-year-old gentleman who was my patient for seven years down in post, and I'd put him on most of the nine medications he was on were from my prescription pad, three diabetes pills, a couple of blood pressure pills, a cholesterol pill, an arthritis pill, and I forget the others. So in three to four months after seeing the doctor, my mentor, that guy comes back. He lost like 40 pounds. His blood sugar is normal. Now, pre going to this doctor, his sugar's pushing 300, even though he's on three different agent oral agents for diabetes. And I'm telling him, you need insulin shots now. And he's saying, no way. Goes up there. He's off the three and his sugar's normal. And he's off his reflux med, off his cholesterol med, off one blood pressure pill. The other one was a half a dose. And he comes back to me, the 74-year-old guy with the tear in his eye. And he says, Doc, thank you for sending me up there. He, we all, really he, that doctor helped restore my life. I'm now out in the garden working. I'm work wow. playing with my grandkids. I'm not just sitting in my recliner waiting to die. So that was a huge one. If you reverse type 2 diabetes, you reverse your risk of heart attack, stroke, cancer, Alzheimer's, all these things. That was amazing. Lupus, fibro, these, all these people were just better. And these are people I went to church with around town. I knew them. They're my patients. So anyways, learned it. I decided, man, I got to do this. I got to learn this. And I got to practice this way if someone wants to. Yeah. So I went to the board, the hospital board, and told them, look, I learned, I'm learning this. It's really helping. People are reversing their diseases but it doesn't work in seven minutes. I need two hours for a new patient, one hour for a follow-up. And if enough people sign up for this, then our money's going away. I mean, we're going in the tank yeah. back in the red. So I tried to scheme and, and figure out a way to ride the fence and do both. And ultimately they fired me. So on a Friday afternoon, they said, be out by Monday morning. I called wow. my wife, said, grab the truck, meet me at the clinic. We got to clear out by Monday. We, I took about a week off and went to a used office uh, store in Lubbock and bought a used office uh, desk and chair and a laptop. And so I'm all in for 500 bucks, bought a little square thing for my phone to take a credit card. And I said, let's, we're going to do this because it's, and we named it Veritas because Veritas is Latin for truth. And people showed up and we just started seeing them and teaching them what we knew, which wasn't much at the time, but compared to what they, they were desperate. The other system had failed. Wow. They gave them all they had and they were still very symptomatic and they got better with what we were doing. So word of mouth, it grew and grew and grew over, over that, over those years, we just grew and to today. So so what was your, so come back a, a step. So for people that are listening in on this and they're like, 
so this the kingdom of God, like I can what what's the kingdom of what is the kingdom of God and how does that pertain to like your your question that I wrote down was show me what a doctor in the kingdom looks like, which is what is the kingdom? So from what you've learned, what is the kingdom of God? And how does that relate to health and well-being? Yeah. Well, I'm not the perfect kingdom theologian, but through my journey, and it started when a guy asked me, hey, hey, Ben, what, what gospel did Jesus preach in my good Baptist upbringing? I said, I don't know, but gospel means good news. And he <laughs> said, well, go look it up in the Bible because Jesus says it and Paul says it. And I went and looked and I went back the next day and told him gospel of the kingdom. And he said, yeah, that's right. What is that? And my, <laughs> yeah. answer, my answer that day was... Well, Adam and Eve sinned, so death, dying, and everything came in. So Jesus came to deal with that so we can get to heaven. And he said, well, that's more like a gospel of salvation, yeah, this which is a true story, but there's way more in it. Authority was like the big thing. Authority, body, soul, spirit, and understanding the Holy Spirit through our spirit, born again spirit. We have access to the truth in everything, every moment of every day. We have the right to be ruled by God, for him to be our Lord, our ruler, our sovereign. Our, and we have access. He lives in us. We're seated in him in heavenly places. And what that means, and we're his representer, representative here on the earth versus in the soul where the enemy can whisper and accuse. And we can believe that accusation and walk in that. So this soul versus spirit was a huge part of the kingdom understanding. Authority was a huge part. And then when you bring in the physical, like people come in here with the physical symptoms. So we have the body, we have the flesh, but knowing those cells respond to supernatural. So is it the soul coming in, influencing those cells, those heart muscle cells, those pancreas cells, those neurons, or is it the spirit, the truth, the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of the liar and the accuser? So just learn mostly through thoughts, taking captive the thought. So the authority, that we voluntarily submit ourselves to this liar yeah. and that lie drives physical changes in our cells that manifest as symptoms and a medical doctor just treats a symptom. We're taught to manage diabetes, manage asthma, manage everything. We don't reverse anything and it's because a pill can't reverse and all we learn are pills. To truly reverse and resolve it, be done with it, yeah. only the body knows how to do that. So you've got to, and a big part of your body's influenced by your thinking. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So just understanding that word's true. We have access to this truth. Jesus is the truth. But in this moment, what would Jesus do? What would he say? What would he think? How would he manifest this power, this authority over that other kingdom? So just knowing there's these two kingdoms, knowing it's, there's the power and authority. Jesus got it all back until we voluntarily submit in our thinking to the liar. So to me, that's the kingdom. It's right here in our thinking. Do we go this way or this way? Take that thought captive, line it up with the truth. The, king, the kingdom's not about food and drink. The two pillars. Exercise profiteth a little bit. The third pillar. Yeah. The, the kingdom's not about food and drink. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Well, peace and joy is what your cells need to function physically yeah. well. Right alignment, righteousness, right alignment in your thinking with the truth, who's a person? It's in the word and it's the Holy Spirit leading you in that word too. So that's the kingdom to me. So how there's there's a couple of there's so many questions in this. Firstly, quick one. So what happened? You had one child, you couldn't get pregnant, 24 misses, then you discover the kingdom. How many kids have you got? What happened? So we laid it down, said we're done, no more fertility, no more nothing. And thank you for the one. We're good. Let's go. Uh, with whatever else you got for us. And <laughs> we got pregnant the next month. <laughs> uh, and then we got pregnant four more times. So we have six kids now. Oh totally. my gosh. That, so it works. <laughs> oh, it works. <laughs> and all these it. things will be given unto you. <laughs> and isn't that amazing? But here's the phenomenal thing is the delay, the gap, the pain, the the absence of the promise is what provoked you to look differently, which yeah. then turns into thank you, Jesus. I know that you don't cause this, but oh wow, thank you that you work everything for good. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, that there's so, a way out. There's an exit. If we just seek it, we'll find it. But now you got like six kids and no job, and because the old system's not going to work, and you refuse to compromise. You set up this company called Veritas, which is truth. And you want to help people step into truth and wholeness, wellness. 
how did how did you reconcile that with your wife? She sounds like a very practical person. You're like, hey, honey, uh, this is not working. I just got fired. Um, I don't have a job, but I got this idea. We're going to start a business. It's going to be a health business. How did that conversation go? And was that scary? Where did you see God come through in that regard? Yeah. Oh, that's a whole nother podcast probably. But actually, Jamie is way more intuitive, intuitive minded. I'm way more intellectual. She's really can, in tune with the spiritual. And actually, her first response was, okay, I feel like a butterfly coming out of a cocoon. We're released. Oh, wow. Let's go. And so she was supportive the whole way. She she was awesome. She's not one of those that's in the business, micromanaging or really connected at all. She actually kind of stays out of the business side. But she, now that we flipped it to Peace Pillar first, she's like, this is it. I'm 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 a hundred percent in with Veritas now. Where before it's like, yeah, that's great. It is a truth, but good luck over there. I'm gonna raise these kids. And I mean, she's been supportive, but a little bit, but now she's like, man, this is, this is right. Now it feels more right to her now, but really she's been great the whole time. Supportive. It was scary, for, but I brought that in. I mean, I go to the checkbook, try to balance it. We got bills to pay. We have no money coming in. I've got to start seeing patients. I got to charge this much. How's this going to work? Of course, I go to selling stuff, selling my extra truck and my horses and all the chickens I could sell. I mean, I just, I cash in the kids college fund. I cash in my retirement like I just start like an orphan, just start scrambling. I mean, this yeah. is when I was pretty new in the kingdom and in sonship versus orphan. That was just starting to realize that. Um, and man, actually, and 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 man pleasing, yeah. and and performance were a big thing in my life back then. And they can try to sneak in, but I didn't want to tell all those people in post that I was leaving. So I kind of kept it quiet and acted like I was just going to stay there in that little tiny town with my little office, private office cash thing. And I knew I was leaving, I, but there's a story, a miraculous thing happened one night. I got stranded eight miles from home. I had to walk home in the middle of the night and I was checking on some horses that I thought had gotten out. And the Lord told me clearly, what are you still doing in post? I gave you a house in Abernathy. So he gave us his house miraculous provision came in our mailbox, which I know we probably have to wrap this up, but I told Jamie the night before, because the Lord showed her this house and he said, it's yours. And I said, my orphan rose up, said, there's no way we can't afford that. We have to sell ours and we don't have a paycheck. And I'm a new, I just got my ability, what I can do seeking myself first, my thing first. Yep. So I said, no, we can't afford that. And I, and she said, the Lord told us it's ours. Just do it. And, and we're going to, we need to be obedient. I said, money done, just show up out of nowhere, Jamie. <laughs> and we had a little, little tiff and I got a little upset the next day. She calls me, I'm at the County jail. I still had the County jail medical contract. And, and normally I don't get phone calls in the jail because the reception's not good. Well, my phone rings and it's her. And I thought, Oh no, she knows yeah. not to call here. Cause I don't get good service. And I thought there's an emergency. And so I answered and she said, you need to sit down. And so I, I thought, okay, someone died. And she said, I just went to the mailbox. The mailman delivered an envelope with your name on it, open it up. And there's a check for $8,500 in it. And I said, what? Because we don't have money. We don't come from money. We don't have stocks. We don't play the lottery and zero. And uh, then she said, wait a minute. There's a second envelope. There was a check in there for $4,500. And the day before, when I said money done grow on trees, it was thirteen thousand dollars that we were needing on that for the down payment and stuff yeah. on that house. That was one, one, and it was the next day, twenty four hours later. So it's not even time for someone to put that in the post. The boom, they were in there. Nobody knew oh, about it. That was from seven years before. The little backstory on that: when I was a re- uh, intern, uh, they they collect taxes out of our paycheck as a medical resident and intern. Well, Congress passed a law after I was done with residency. They passed a law that said residents in medical training don't have to pay income tax. We're retroactivating the law to the year 2000. Well, and that happened years before. And my residency program had sent me a letter years before saying, hey, here's what happened. Sign this paper. We'll try to recollect, reimburse and collect that old tax money. That was like four years before this that they oh, sent man. me that letter. Totally forgot about it. And it shows up that day. But even after that, I drug my feet. 
we got that new house. I didn't put a for sale sign up at our old house because I didn't want the people in town to be mad at me that were moving because man pleasing. <laughs> I get stranded like, like out. In, I'm gonna I'm gonna seek Jesus, but I'm just gonna do it at night so nobody really knows. <laughs> So I'm out checking these horses. They, they were got out of this pasture. Somehow the gates closed. These horses are gone. I'm like, well, where are these horses? My truck gets stuck in this pasture. My phone, I drop it down in the radiator fan. I couldn't get, I was with my flashlight. I was trying to look some wired wrapped around the fan. Long story. So my phone's stuck in the truck. I can't reach it. Can't call home. Can't drive the truck. I'm eight miles from home. It's midnight. I'm walking home in the middle of the night. Tried to run. I thought if I run the eight minute mile, I can be home in an hour. And that didn't work. So I'm walking. I'm two, three hours into this walk. And I hear the Lord tell me, what are you still doing in this old house in post Texas? I gave you that other one. You need to go. It was a big, so there are lots of times in this transition where Jamie was right there and faithful and hearing and encouraging and I'm dragging and I'm fear of man and provision and orphan. And I had a lot to wrestle through and grow and mature in, in the kingdom. Um, so it was a journey for sure. Still is. We don't have it all figured out, um, but it, it was definitely for me, scary at first and um, for, for her too at times, but in, a, you know, in our own ways, we, we got a little freaked out. I, I'm loving this. I, I love the analogy of the old house versus the new house. God's like, yeah. why are you still, this is Galatians. Oh, foolish Galatians. Why are you living in the old house? Under the yeah. law, under the your ability, under performance, when I've given you a kingdom that's under grace, and would you learn to trust me? It starts in a peace. Will you say a peace? Peace. What is it? Nutrition, hydration, hydration. and movement or exercise. Uh, I, I'm just loving this. Let's just. I know there's there's so many more we could go, but what's your favorite story of what you've seen God do with you together in and through? effectively what you're called to do. Mm. That's a great question. There's been so much. Um, to me, probably the biggest is just the ability um, to be who he made me be, which is a dot connector to go and just teach, connect the dots for people so they can have an aha moment. Acid reflux is not from too much stomach acid. It's, it's a location issue. Acid's not supposed to be in your esophagus. It's supposed to be in the stomach, and it's supposed to be battery acid level. pH of 1.5 is battery acid. That's normal gastric stomach acid. Just connecting these dots, um, and people have the aha moment. So the ability to just go teach, go give a presentation, go give a lecture, go travel. I've traveled so much to churches, civic organizations, schools, everywhere, just to go spread the gospel of the kingdom. Yeah, really. But in the health realm, because health is just such a big deal, it, it handcuffs people where they think they have to stay in this job for this health insurance or they're going to get Alzheimer's because it's in their family history. No, genes, they're like 5% of it. You can keep those genes turned off, but you teach, 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 and aha moments come. And there's just so many of them, but that's the biggest thing. I get to just go be who God made me to be, and people have aha moments, and they get set free from that system that's kept them bound up. And we shouldn't need that system. We're, we're meant to be well. People just don't understand that heart attacks are brand new. The first one in America is in 1912. There was one in the entire country, first one ever. And now there's 700,000 people a year dying from heart disease. And yeah. the number one treatment, statins, get you a 0.8% reduction in mortality. So our number one killer, our best treatment, gets you less than 1% benefit. Well, you connect the dots on why is this? How do we get here? Where did this lie and deception come in from? And it just, you know, can, can unhook the enemy's ability to put spirit of fear into people that these diseases are out of nowhere, your genes or whatever, and it's going to kill you. You got to be fearful of cancer and all this stuff. And it's not true. It's not the germ. It's not the gene. It's the terrain and the terrain really starts right here. Yes. So I don't know if that's what you're getting at, but that's my funnest and best time is just getting to teach people and connect the dots. And then there's lots of testimonies, lots of amazing uh, patients that have gotten well and disease free tons of those. So those are always awesome, but it's not me doing it. The body does it. Yeah. It's, it's really, you're the cure. Yeah. So I love that. So where to from here podcast comes out weekly. You're the cure. Uh, Dr. Ben, what's the website where people can find out more and actually access a ton of this training that you have? Yep. 
Well, our old website, veritasmedical.com, it will redirect you to the new one. And the new one is veritaswellnessmember.com. And, and what does that do? Basically, there's some education there, but you can sign up and be a member at $35 a month to get access to curated educational content, like a weekly three-minute video from me on a text, um, a library of topics like heart disease, cholesterol, and statins, um, live Zooms twice a week with our wellness navigators. You can also order a blood panel that looks for inflammatory markers in your blood, and then the wellness navigator interprets that blood panel for you gives you diet and lifestyle steps to do. You can also do what we call a peace consultation where we talk about the peace pillar. There's movement consultations, there are exercise videos, there's just a lot of stewardship and, and really we're there to walk with people through the live Zooms, but also one-on-ones if you need them. And what I love is they're actually starting to work with companies, bringing in company wellness, your connection with Jeff Baldwin, with Beaten Bow Homes. That's a whole nother story and topic. Actually, people can search out the podcast, You're the Cure, and then just look at the one, You're the Cure, an interview, I think it's with Casey Brewer. Of Correct. Yep. Beaten by Homes, talking about what happened there when people jumped onto this wellness program where they couldn't have babies, they're having babies. Where they're not diabetic, they're no longer diabetic. How? Inner peace, nutrition, uh, hydration, and exercise. And I just love it. It's possibly easier than we think. And and yet I've got to take responsibility. And it's a different system because it's a system of the kingdom. Amen. Dr. Ben, thank you so much. Would you be willing to pray? I mean, this, this, you can't get better than a medical doctor praying well-being over people. So would you pray and just bless everyone listening to this you with bet. however you feel led? You bet. Thank you, Andy. <clears throat> Father God, we just thank and give you the glory. We thank you for your amazing design, this amazing, amazing body that you put our spirit into. And we thank you for your word. The, the depth of that word is incredible. It's the owner's manual of how to steward not only our temple, but our mind, our thinking. Um, thank you that the word became flesh and showed us how to walk with people, how to listen to you, how to only say and do what you say and do and he put that on display first and showed us how to love each other so we just thank you for the word that became flesh jesus christ we thank you that we have the ability to walk in the kingdom now in the earth right now not wait till we die and go to heaven we thank you for this good news gospel of the kingdom father so i just pray over the listeners the audience that hears this father that these words will be encouragement will be life will be a source of motivation inspiration to seek the kingdom first seek you not seek healing seek the healer seek the truth that will set them free and for them to realize that the pharmacia and physicians although well-meaning could be deceived um, so father we just bless this audience to you and encourage them that they'll continue to seek you thank you father for all that you've done for Andy and his reach, his podcast, his connections that he makes with people. And we just ask that you continue to advance the kingdom and let us be faithful stewards here on the earth. Help us to continue to grow, mature down our spiritual journey path so that we can fully put on the, the culture, the kingdom of heaven in the earth right now. Let your will be done in the earth as it is in heaven, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.